third line gear or a 72 hour active duty military kit. Now this kit is specifically designed and set up for me and my operations. I use this, I wouldn't say daily, but very often, several times a week, I am required to have this with me and we are maneuvering and doing movements with this kit. So I've refined it to me. Now you might see some things that are unorthodox or may not meet your needs and that's okay. This is to generate ideas and see what I carry normally. So normally I am a vehicle based unit or fire team that operates out of armor, a lot light armor. But this also has to be capable of flight operations. I have to be able to be picked up in a helicopter and flown depending on the location and sustain myself in that location for 72 hours. And that is where this kit was pretty much designed and born and meant to operate around. And that is how I do it. So let's dive into it. You're gonna see some goofy stuff. So the pack itself, as you see, let me push this out of the way really quick because I actually have an empty pack, a brand new one because I've liked this pack so much, I went out and bought another one in case it would break. This is a Kelty, or disregard, this is based off the Kelty Red Wing 50, but this is an Eagle Industries Invader 50. So it's a 50 liter pack, has a lot of cool features, very, I guess you could say small, this barely makes 72 hour kit for myself, but due to those flight operations, when we have to fit in a certain weight constraint, I had to ditch some stuff, unfortunately, which is gonna kinda suck in the long run, and has, but I have to be in weight constraints and this pack excels at doing what it does. Lots of padding, two aluminum stays, and it also has a plastic backer to kinda keep the rigidity of it, has a lot of benefits to it, large, pockets on either side for water or other sustainment. It does have a beaver tail for helmet or extra gear, which I like quite a bit. Internal, it does have a brain up front, and then it also has a capability for water bladders, and then it also has mesh pockets on the sides internally, which is really nice. I really enjoy this pack, and that is why I bought a second one. Lots of strap downs. You can use the backpack strap. You can stow it up, which you will see how I do that here in a second. And it, overall, it works very well. So I like this pack, want to give you a quick rundown on it. That's what I'm using. And now we're going to push in to actually the one that I am using. And you can see where I place things particularly. We're going to go over to the exterior first, and then we'll dive into the interior, what I actually carry. So the first thing that stands out, which is really goofy and kind of annoying, a lot of people call it out, is this max sack on the back. Now this has two poncho liners in it, and that is meant for sustainability in cold weather environments. I'm in the Northern United States and it gets extremely cold up here. So me running as a fire team, if I would get dropped off in the middle of nowhere, because I have to set up, you know, a, not a fob, but just a small security point for a certain purpose in general. I mean, I, I can't go into too many details. But I have to be able to sustain myself and my team, so we run two poncho liners. Now you could run one, but normally we'll have four people, and two will be as asleep, and the other two will be awake. So the other two that are awake will give their poncho liners to the two sleeping. So you can double up almost on four poncho liners and then a uh, poncho itself, and you have a pretty good sleep system, even in a very cold environment, which we have other methods which we'll dive into. But this is removable on the bottom, but I typically keep it down there to keep excess space free in the pack for mission essential stuff. Up front, immediately on the top, I have the be in the beaver tail is my helmet. So of course, if I'm utilizing my helmet, then this is no longer a factor in this. And this is excess space that I could put in mission essential equipment or gear that's necessary. Normally I will run my night vision if I am not wearing it or needing it because it's potentially it's daytime and we're just maneuvering and we don't need it. It'll ride in the helmet if I'm not using it or using my helmet or the night vision will go back here and then this will get cinched up fairly easy. And it's nice because when you're running it, I have more space. So up front here, diving into kind of the small admin pouch, a lot of thin things, because when you stuff your helmet in here, it tends to compress it, so you can't fit bulkier items up there. But I run a baseball cap, 
just depending on what I'm going with. Um, it's nice to have. And then I also run a poncho or a multi-cam poncho for you know rain and then also for that sleep system, which I was talking about over there. Pretty nice to have on me. And that is it in this pouch. Now they don't have some mesh pouches. You can like stuff things, but I've noticed it compresses a lot. So you need to put thin things in there. Running on the sides, I have a 1.5 liter and it's down because literally I just used this pack the, yesterday. So I am down on water. I haven't replenished. It's a weekend. I'm hanging out. I'll worry about that for Sunday. Also, I run equally the same on the left-hand side, another 1.5 liters. So three liters on the pack. And then I have another liter on my plate carrier, which you can kind of actually see right there, just hanging out. There's another one liter over there. So total four liters in general, but I have sustainment or procurement for water as well, because four liters is not good enough for 72 hours. You could probably push it, but if you're doing stuff, it is not going to happen, which will dive into that. Now over here on the side, I run a canteen as well. Court, I normally keep this empty. Honestly, you're supposed to keep it up because I do run a gas mask, which I will show you, which it needs to have the top and the capability of actually needing it. And that's a different argument within SOPs that you can have with your own unit and stuff like that. But typically we have to have it on us, but depending on the use, blah, blah, blah. I don't run it. Um, I can always transfer, which I get it transferring during a contaminated area, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I'm done with the conversation. You get it, I don't run it. <laughs> Let's move into um, the other side of this. So open it up. I do like how it opens because it kind of clamshells open like this. In the admin pouch up here, I run little odds and ends, which I will show you here in a second. We'll dive into that. I run an electronic hand warmer, depending on how far out I'm going. I like to be warm. I also have normal ones as well. Extra glasses because I am plagued with poor eyesight. So I normally wear contacts, but I do keep spare contacts and glasses in here. So I can swap them out if necessary, along with some other items in there. I have an extra um, battery for my kit, my WarTac ATAX kit um, that I just plus up on battery life because depending on how far out we're going. And then I have some Mio Energy and some Liquid IV and other stuff like that that's stuffed in there. Really nice, honestly, usability. So let me get this out of the way real quick before we dive into it. I'm gonna dive into the small kit here. Let's see, I might be able to zoom in for you. There we go, let's do this. Cool, so. Small outdoor research bag. These things are extremely lightweight. I'm gonna peel it open. Let's see, center it up for y'all so you can see. So I run a small weapons cleaning kit, which is fairly nice. Um, I like it just because it has something that I can utilize or it has a rod, which is one of the um, cable ones, CLP, and then a broken shell extractor. I don't see a lot of people running that, honestly. And it's interesting because that could be a fatal malfunction for your weapon system. Now, I also run some Loctite. Do I really need this? Eh, I just find myself using it, you know, quite a bit. So it goes in there. I have these little major safety pins. These things are pretty like beefy if you look at them. And these help out a lot for repairing gear or attaching things just in case. Um, some duct tape, um, whistle, that kind of stuff. In the back here, I have hand warmers, extra batteries. Here's triples, double A's, CR123's, that kind of stuff, you know, just in case on top of the already extra that I have. Moving in to here open that back up. I do run a Sawyer Mini water filter, good for 100,000 gallons. And I typically run a adapter so this can screw straight into my water source and I can go dirty water to clean water, whatever's necessary. And it allows me to plus up on water. I have uh, tissues. I have a Leatherman with a Leatherman bit kit, which I typically carry a Leatherman on me. So this sometimes would get discarded, but the bit kit is really helpful too for like maintaining weapon systems, sighting systems. If they start to get loose and start to shake off just because your Loctite didn't work as intended because you've shot so much, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it happens. 
Also have some dude wipes in here, which are really nice, and some TP. So ultimately, it's just a small, tiny little kit that is meant for small tasks and purposes, which is what I have. And that's pretty much all the little tiny items that I carry. So I'm gonna stuff all this stuff off to the side here. And then we're gonna dive back in to the pack. So let's open this up immediately. I run a kind of a neck gaiter in the winter time. It's really nice. It can go around my helmet, cover my ears too when you're getting major hardcore wind because I don't like wearing my beanie underneath my helmet because it doesn't fit and then it kind of like rotates around, which I get it. I think Cry Precision or someone made like the helmet wrap, but it's like $100 when this is like six. So if I ever get that, you know, if I ever have that type of money that I can just spend, or if it gets issued, hey unit, if you're watching this, that'd be awesome. Next in this is my battle board. So pretty much depending on the mission I'm doing, normally I always run my battle board. So let me open this up real quick. I have everything concealed because it is for my mission and I don't want that information getting out there, but I like running kind of the laptop based setup is I have my you know, references or maps up here. And then I have all my pertinent writing information down here. Inside I run viz markers, and this is pretty much always with me. Unless I go airborne, I will not bring this. This will get chucked mainly because it's unnecessary for that particular mission I was talking about. Gas mask, I run it inside. Um, I do not like running it exterior. I did for a long time, it's annoying. And then certain, aspects we have to don it or put it on us so then it'll come out of my pack and then it'll get clipped on and if a necessary if i need to run more equipment i will put this on my leg and my waist and then i can put more mission essential gear or more food or more water or whatever's necessary into this pack and that can be exterior or if i'm wearing my helmet this can get stuffed in the beaver tail like there's so many like ways around it that i can work with here's a small fix it kit this has um sewing needles, a sewing kit, you know, Velcro, um, duct tape, shoelaces, brass wire, zip ties, stuff like that. I've noticed that gear tends to fail at the wrong point in time. Is this really necessary? Eh, not really, but if I'm going out 72 hours and my shoelaces break, I, yeah, it's kind of a bad day or something like that. Now the sewing kit is arguable, but if you have to repair gear in the field, it's nice to have something like that. Let me get this gas mask out of the way. It's pretty much concealed up really nicely. Here is another filter. This is a bee free filter. So this is normally a dirty water as well because I carry two methods and I can just fill this up with dirty water. This is a three liter, if I recall, two or a three liter. I forget what it has on it. Um, I think it's a three liter and this will also filter water for that water procurement, mainly because I'm located in a certain area that there is water everywhere. And that's why I don't bring a lot of water with me normally about three to four liters, depending on the mission. So getting further down in here, I run iPro. These are Oakley M frames. Normally these will come out and I'll actually utilize them. I have gas mask inserts in there as well. I love Oakley M frames because they cover a lot. They're a little expensive. And honestly, I could ditch this pouch if I had to, if I knew I was going, hey, I could open this up, grab just the lenses out, put my clear ones back in there and then ditch all this weight. But typically I run the pouch as well. Immediately on the side, so if you're going to peek, take a look inside here, I have, you know, gloves on the side, just easily accessible. These are normally my diesel gloves or my, my bad gloves that I put on if I'm refilling jerry cans or fuel or something like that, because these things smell terrible and I don't want my good gloves getting destroyed. So I typically keep those in there. Nothing else down the side here. Wet weather and rain gear is immediately pretty well accessible right here. That's Gore-Tex top and bottom. Let's see, go down, nothing in there. I have stripped down MREs. There are three of them in here, very condensed and small. Works really well. Typically, I will also run trail mix in this kit with me a lot, like a big bag, which is like almost 2,000 calories. So 2,000 calories mixed with another, you know, three or probably about four to 5,000 calories. I mean, we're pushing, you know, roughly 
minus the little tiny stuff and all that kind of nonsense out of there. You're about 8,000 calories all in total in this bag, which is beneficial and can sustain myself for a long period of time. Okay, so one of the last things that is in here in a sea line bag, which has the vent, kind of like a Mac sack, is full extra clothing. So I carry cold weather massive bottoms, which I didn't show you as I normally carry a massive top actually on me if it's cold, but I carry the bottoms to this as another layer for extreme cold weather in here along with two extra socks, underwear, and then a thin under liner and a t-shirt, mainly just to give me full extra one change of clothes. So if I would get soaking wet due to rain or something like that, or I would fall into a body of water or I sweat too much because they're pushing us super hard, I can swap out into something dry and let them air out, let my old stuff air out. It is sealed in here because I have been rained on and snowed on a lot. And I have saw people unfortunately not seal up clothing inside this and get their stuff completely wet. They've never done that after, which is funny. It's a solid lesson learned. I learned that lesson almost 12 years ago and it stuck with me ever since. So I waterproof pretty much everything that is going to touch my body. So pretty much this is my 72 hour kit. There is not a lot of stuff in here. Like I said, I have to be airborne and that is including my weapon systems, my ammunition, my radio, my comms, my full plate carrier, my EDC, what I carry on me. Then this also with Seaburn stuff, including, you know, stuns, flashes, other stuff like that, CS gas if necessary, night vision. There's so much that weight will just condense extra radio batteries. Like you saw over there, there's one, there's, other mission essential stuff like range finders and all this other stuff that is also required to go in this bag. That's why there's a little bit of excess space up front in here that I can load it if necessary. So this is my kit. This is what I run for my mission. Like I said, this might be completely different. You may think I have too much. You may think I have too little. That's okay. This is tailored for me. This is meant to give you ideas for you to create a kit maybe for whatever you're doing, or just to give you some ideas. So if you guys like this kind of stuff, want to see more or more detail, just ask me some questions. If you do have some questions, I try to answer them and I try to get in the comments as best as I can. But other than that, definitely like, subscribe. It helps out a lot. Even a simple comment is, is honestly helping the algorithm a lot. So just leave me hi, or you're great, or you suck, or you know, <laughs> whatever you want, even the negative comments help, which is funny as people try to hate, but it actually helps me, which is fine. So send the hate. I don't care. I get paid by the DOD every 15 days. So send it. <laughs> but anyways, off my rant. Y'all have a great day.